dealing with foolishness. That's the prayer point we have before me now. We're going to deal with all forms of foolishness and push it out of, out of the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is willing for us to adjust ourselves to be in line for the blessing which He has prepared for us long before the beginning of the world. So tonight I want you to be conscious. They say this man is talking, they say it's a foolish man. The other man is talking, they say it's a wise man. What is the difference between a wise man and a foolish man? Why, why is it that the talk of one man is not acceptable and the, what the other man says is acceptable? The truth is, tonight people of God, we are going to just align ourselves with God. The Bible says, acquaint yourself with God and be at peace. Job 22, 21. We are going to stay with God. God has promised us in the book of Luke 21, 15, that He will give us a mouth and a wisdom that all our adversaries can neither can say nor resist. That's to say that we will be able to speak wisdom with our mouth. Hallelujah. So every, every form of foolishness and foolish talking will be taken away from us by God himself in the name of Jesus. We will not be speaking and people look at themselves and say, this man is so foolish. We will be wise in Jesus' name. I say we will be wise in the name of Jesus. Because there's a lot of things that have to do with God, that has to do with wisdom. You know, the, the, the writer of the book of Proverbs says, wisdom is the principal thing. He said, in all thy acting, he said, act for wisdom. It is the principal thing. It's the main thing. That's what makes the difference between a wise man and a foolish man. That's what makes the difference between the rich and the poor. That's what makes the difference between the ruler and the ruled. Wisdom. Tonight we are going to find time to ask God for wisdom. And this wisdom that cannot fail will be yours. In the name of Jesus. I say it will be yours in the name of Jesus. So let's read from somewhere, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. The Bible says, He that walketh with a wife shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Hallelujah. So we are expected to be wise, not just to be wise, but to walk with the wise. Because God cannot stand foolishness. In fact, God can stand it. God hates foolishness. You know, somebody just finished talking, everybody laughs. Why did they laugh? You didn't ask them, why did they laugh? Why did they just gaze at each other and walk away one after the other? Because this person has spoken foolishly. From today, that foolishness is taken away from you in the name of Jesus. It will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Foolishness will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. So the things we say about ourselves, about others, will also let anybody that is listening to us to know whether we are wise or we are foolish. For instance, if you look at Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1, Proverbs 14, verse 1. The Bible says, Every wise woman builded a house, but the foolish one plugged it down with a hand. Because of the action of the second woman, she counted as foolish. How? She blocked down her own family with her own hand. How? By quarreling. By telling people stories about the home. My husband is a useless man. Hopeless man. Worthless man. Has no value. He has brought no money for feeding. Now he tears down her own house with her own hand. They call her foolish. Why? Because of her actions. Hallelujah. A wise one builds a house. The husband has brought five naira. 
is not enough. She looked for something to add to it. Gather the children together. See, we are just going to manage this. Everybody get happy. Tomorrow, my detector, God is in control. Encourages everybody, motivates everybody. Now, it could be the same amount of money, but the disposition and the approach is different. And they call one wise, and they call one foolish. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says, Psalm 14, verse 1, that the fool says in his heart that there is no God. He, did, he may not have told anybody that there is no God, but by his action, he commits offenses without looking around. He says anything he wants to say without thinking twice. So, he, 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 they call him a fool. A fool. That is, a fool. He, he, his action is proven as if there is no God. Now, let me just give you an idea. There was one man in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25, Nabal. His name is called Nabal. The story is very long, so we are not going to read it. But I'm just going to use it as a basis for which we are going to have a clearer understanding as we go into prayers. Nabal was a rich man, but he was a fool. He had a beautiful woman, wife, happy girl, very prudent, very industrious, very wise. And one day, as David was in trouble, he saw that Laban was sharing his sheep and he sent ten men to go him. Ah, please, sir, we have been meeting with your headsmen inside the forest. We didn't kill them. We didn't trouble them. We didn't give them any stress. Now we are in trouble. Uh, just run away from my master, Mr. Saul, and I need help from you. Please, can you arrange for some bread and give to my boy so that we can be able to upkeep ourselves? And my pastor started throwing the problems. These days that servants are running away from their masters. These days that people no longer want to humble themselves to serve. And then you think I will suffer and get my sheep and come and give it to you to eat for free? He said, go and tell him that he is very stupid and he can never see my sheep to eat for free, neither my bread. That response was so bad that when they got to David, the ten men got to David, they said, yeah, everybody, <laughs> saddle your ass and get prepared for war. We are going to ravage, ravage the house of Nabal. And they were preparing with 400 men, 400 horsemen. They were on their way. And this Abigail, Nabal's wife came. She came with thousands of loads of bread. She came with plenty of sheep and donkey for their food. She came crying, she came on her knees, she came begging, trying to console them, not to do anything against Nabal. He said, you know, his name is Nabal, his name is, is a fool, he doesn't know what to do, that's why he has done this, I'm so sorry for what has happened, and they were able to pacify David. Two people, one incident, two different approaches, two different results. That's what it takes to be a foolish person. A foolish person scatter things, continue to come down. A wise person gather things and continues to go up. Even though eventually Nabal actually died, he died of something else that killed him. And David ended up marrying Abigail. That's the end of that story. But the point remains that Nabal was foolish and Abigail was wise. May the Lord give you wisdom that you'll be able to speak wisdom and gather goodness unto yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you wisdom that you'll be able to speak wisdom and make peace in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you wisdom that you'll be able to Settle issues between friends and friends in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, you see, let me just read a few passages of scripture. I want you to see how God does not like foolishness. And God will not pretend, He will not pretend to like foolishness. I don't want us to think that, hey, because God didn't do the means, He likes foolishness. No. 
Our God is a God of wisdom. Hallelujah. Isaiah 33 verse 6. The Bible says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time. If you see a man rising on Monday, oh, he's a very happy person, very rich. And on Friday, he's a very poor person, very unhappy, desolated. He's a fool. The Bible says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time. Sir, some days you make a million naira. Some days you will lose 500,000. That nobody will know. The way you dress, the way you talk, the way you eat, stability. Hallelujah. Wisdom and knowledge shall be what? The stability of your times. That you are able to manage between the good times and the bad times and the ugly times and you are able to maintain a standard of living in your family that even when nobody has earned any income for three months the breakfast content has not changed when nobody has received anything in three months the breakfast content has not changed the children have not noticed it the teacher in school did not notice it. Why? Wisdom and knowledge. May the Lord give you wisdom and knowledge in the name of Jesus. Because the foolish man gets money today. Oh, I'm so happy. I touched my brother 2000. I touched my sister 15. Oh, yeah, let's cook pepper soup. Let everybody be happy. Tomorrow they have not paid us. I don't know why these children are making noise in this house. I mean, you need to see an angry man where he doesn't have money. He can break anybody's head. Why are you making noise? Everybody run, quick, 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 quick. Ah, soldier is coming. They give their father a name. Some people call their father uh, Islam. Some call it Yami. It's Yami Islam. Why? No stability. Today, happiness. Tomorrow, hunger. Why? The day there is no money, hunger. They were very funny. <laughs> and I used to have one boss in the office. The day my boss comes singing to the office, he say, Ah, today, today. It's a great day. I say, boss, today is a great day. He say, yeah, man. Let everybody have free lunch today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> That the day himself and his wife has finished fighting. Ah, that day. Good morning. What is good about this morning? Get out! Who kept this thing here? See, I will take something and break somebody's head. That day, all of us know that today is a bad day. Sir, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your past. May the Lord give you stability in your finances. May the Lord give you stability in your knowledge. May the Lord give you stability in your relationship. It will take only wisdom and knowledge. Please, just help me. Let's just quickly read through some passages of scriptures. I want people to accept this thing and know that God has a plan. Proverbs 1 7. God has a plan for all of us, and God wants you to have wisdom. God wants you to have wisdom. The fear of the Lord, you need wisdom, you need to fear God a little bit. Let's start from there. Five wisdom and instruction. Fools, they don't like wisdom. Proverbs 3, 35. The, the wise and glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. Fools shall have shame, the wise shall have glory. So, it's better you are on the side of the wise. It is better you are on the side of the wise. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 18. It is better you are the side of the wise man. Whoever has eyes a child has lying lips. No whoever spreads slander is a fool. Anyone that spreads slander is a fool. Hallelujah. God has a plan for everyone, so I choose to be on the side of the wise. And I suggest that you also be on the side of the wise. Proverbs 13, verse 20. He who walks with wise men shall be wise, 
but the companions of fools will be destroyed. Walk with the wise so that you can be wise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 10. The heart knows it won't be and the Savior is done. Proverbs 15, verse 2. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rashly. A fool's fault for foolishness. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, be wise. Choose to be wise. But there is nobody that was born wise. The guy that wrote the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes became the wisest man in the world. And the wisdom, the wisdom, this guy is not, he was not just wise in speaking. He was not just wise in writing. He used his wisdom to make money also. So I check and I ask people, I ask people, I say, please, what was the profession of Solomon? What was the name of his company where he was working? You won't find it. Solomon sat in his office as a king. People come and beg him. Sir, we don't want to fight with you. We want to start paying taxes. People started paying. We want to pay taxes. Those who were paying 10,000, they said, let us increase it to 1 million. Those who were paying, they let us increase it. This, this man is wise. He will just sit in that office and think and come up with a solution and destroy your country without even leaving his office, without fighting. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Joseph, we have struggled for too long. This took over, took over, took over. We have struggled for too long. It's time for us to wake up and make money and use the wisdom of God to make money in a way that people will look at us and know that God is with us. We can use the wisdom of God and succeed in every endeavor of life that we may begin to do and let people know that God is with us and is helping us. Hallelujah. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. If all that get is get wisdom and get understanding. Proverbs 4, 7 and 8. God wants to give you wisdom. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for this wisdom? Because it's not everything. See, if you if, if you if you trek, if you trek from here to Izumata and trek back because you don't want to spend your money, it is true. People are trekking it. You trek down, maybe three, three hours you are there, three hours you are back, six hours. Maybe you spend only ten minutes in the market. You will be very tired. Number one. Your money, 1,000 to and fro, 2,000 will be saved. But what happened to your time? What happened to your strength? Wouldn't you have made some more money elsewhere? Think about it. That's what the difference between wisdom and foolishness. The wisdom will say, let me make this opportunity. So, so, they, so, so person is going to do what I can go for free. Let me use like this. Let me use this thing like this. At the end, you make double, double on both sides. Wisdom is the principal thing, and wisdom is enough to direct us. Hallelujah. Wow. So briefly tonight, for the next 10 minutes before we begin to pray. There's no need praying if you don't know what you are praying for. How can I get wisdom? Briefly, I'm going to show you from scripture how you can get wisdom. God is, is called, God is the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of God is called the spirit of wisdom. Spirit of understanding, spirit of knowledge. That's uh, Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 2 to 3. The spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. The spirit of wisdom came upon Jesus. It's the spirit of God. So if you want to be wise you must fear God Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom hallelujah 
You must begin to fear. You must begin to reverence God. You must begin to trust in God. You must begin to depend on God. You must begin to call upon His name, knowing that He's the only one that can make you. May you become a wise man in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, may you become a wise man in the name of Jesus Christ. You want to be wise? The Bible says, he that lacketh wisdom, let him ask God. Somebody say prayer. James chapter 1, verse 5. He that lacketh wisdom, let him ask God. For God is the one that giveth wisdom and operateth not, he causes no shadow of turning. Ask God for wisdom, he will give you wisdom. In fact, the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. So, it's what you ask, you shall receive. So, if you go to God and say, God, give me wisdom. Sometimes I look at children going to school and I just look at them because many of them are so foolish. They don't know that they can go to God and say, Lord, make me wise. Nobody was born wise, none of us were born foolish. And those who have become wise have become wise in this world. And those who have become foolish have become foolish in this world. So you can go to God and say, God, give me wisdom. I want to be wise. And the Bible has said, stated that we can ask God for wisdom. So prayer. That's what we are doing tonight. We are asking God for wisdom. Enough of all this rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling. It's because we cannot reach the future. It's foolishness. You rise and fall. Don't ask because uh, 1,800 naira. You fall, you cry. Hey, tomorrow you, you laugh. There's a rise. That's no life. That's no life. Rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling. That's no life, that's foolishness. Because, except the word from the economy, I say, those of you who have listened to the, the preaching, a, a crossover night preaching of many pastors, yes, many of them have told you money will be shared from corner to corner, there will be plenty of abundance. Listen to them, but I know there are three, three men of God in this country. Whose prophecy I agree with my own one of them prophets. Watch out. Let anybody I want to prophesy prophesy his life. We will know the truth when we see the outcome. Who knows the truth? It's not about name, it's not about title. It's about the revelation of God. So you better become wise now because this is the time to become wise. Look at, look at, look at Joseph. Why did they clap for Joseph? He said, look, now we have money. Now there's enough resources. We can consume all that we have for. Because the seven years of adversity, he did it to keep the balance. And you survive through the seven years of adversity without anybody feeling there was any adversity. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. A madman eats with two hands. Take him here into me, yes. Shawama in the middle. When I started to call there, we don't die finish. And people are looking at him. It's as if those people are not experiencing the same adversity. Wisdom. Wisdom and knowledge shall be what? The stability of your time. Do you still need wisdom, sir? Hello, madam. Do you still need wisdom? Number three, meditate on God's word. Psalm 119 from 97 to 105. Take your time to read it. When you meditate on God's word, you get wisdom. You get wisdom. You become wiser. You take right decisions. You already know what is going to happen tomorrow by the reason of the leading of the Holy Ghost. You get wiser. You get wisdom. You prosper. You prosper. By the grace of God, you prosper, you prosper, you prosper. May the Lord prosper you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number four. You begin to obey the word of God, you begin to apply the word of God. 
James chapter 1 verse 22. He says, he that, he says you should do what you hear. He that look at the word of God. And after that, when, when you begin to do what you are hearing, things begin to work for you. Things begin to work because this is the way God has ordained things to work. Hallelujah. 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 Number Number 5, Sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 10, must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Number 6, you must associate with the wise. He that walketh with the wise shall, he that walketh with the wise shall become wise. Hallelujah. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpness. Iron, as a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. So he, he, he doesn't. It's not a long time. It's not a long time when you have friends. If all your friends are mumu, it, it won't be long. You also turn to one mumu very soon. If all your friends are cigarette smokers and you say you are the only one in that house that doesn't smoke, I clap for you. It's just a matter of time. Before three months, you'll be a powerful chain smoker. Iron sharpens iron. As a man sharpening the countenance of his friends. That's what he said. Show me your friend and I'll show you who you are. If you don't like the company of people you are staying with, relocate. If you don't want to become a smoker next week. Ah, so one company pass is not possible. See, as a scientist, I will tell you that if the non-smoker living in the house of a smoker, they even smoke more than the smoker. Because what the smoker is smoking, is, is, he has finished smoking is in the air. You breathe it in and breathe it out. Before you know it, you are already a smoker. Your body begins to attract and magnetize cigarette smoke. It's not today. Let's leave it there. So if you don't want to be a smoker, stay far away from smokers. Because this thing is an an attraction. It magnetizes things and magnetizes people. Alright, without taking much time, look chapter, begin to speak into, as you begin to speak, as you begin to practice wisdom, your wisdom begins to multiply. Luke 21, 15, you know, the Bible says, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom that all your adversaries can neither can say nor resist. That the power of your speech, you must begin to increase what you speak. You must begin to announce what you speak. You know, the Bible was talking about the man in Psalm 1, with that man that does not stand in the way of sinners, that does not sit in the seat of the scumbo, oh, who, who, who does not show anything to look that the people that are at the bus stop, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law, does he meditate day and night? He becomes a wise man. May the Lord make you a wise man by the meditation in God's word, by abandoning the path of the ungodly, by staying in the path of righteousness in the name of Jesus. And the moment you become wise, verse 3, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that people in food in his season, his leaves also shall not wither. Somebody shout hallelujah. And whatsoever he doeth, prosper. No time left, stand up. We use the next 15 minutes to pray. God will give you wisdom in the name of Jesus. You must learn to be a talker. People, you don't need to be talking on the street. I didn't say be a talker to you. You need to be using your mouth to speak some things. Those of you who are old enough, you rented your room. Thank God for your life. All you need to do is just get a mirror and fix on the wall. Every morning before you go out, you see yourself. Every evening when you come back, you see yourself. It's not because you are more handsome than you used to be. That's not the point. The point is, it becomes a point of contact for you to minister to yourself. And to build up your faith. Build, build up your faith in your most holy faith. As you are speaking to your life. As you are speaking to your future. As you are walking on the street. We are showing for the presence of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May the Lord give you wisdom in the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you wisdom in the name of Jesus. 
You will not be among the fools in this world. You will not be counted among the fools in this world. In the name of Jesus Christ. So our first prayer for just ask God for wisdom. Just say, Lord, I cry for wisdom. The Bible says it that lacking wisdom should ask God and I'm asking you. Give me wisdom. I need wisdom to succeed. Nigeria economy is bad. I need wisdom to marry. I need wisdom to rent my house or build my house. I need wisdom to be able to marry my wife and bring up my children. I need wisdom to be able to pack my exam. I need wisdom. Father Lord, give me wisdom. I need wisdom to be able to make progress in life. I need wisdom of God. To be able to get a job, I need wisdom, Lord. Grant me that wisdom. Are you ready to pray this prayer and say, Lord, give me wisdom? I'm here for you, Lord. I, I release my soul, my spirit, everything within me. Oh, if you leave me, oh, where will I be? Oh, God, if you abandon me, where can I go? I need your wisdom to be able to submit, oh, God. I need your wisdom to be able to have a proof, to show results, oh, God. I need your wisdom. Mama Bala Katoti, La Zutu Lukra Katolia, Rakzala Prade Katolia, Rakzata Tali Siteke Prade Kaproko Shetida. I need your wisdom, Father. Oh, God, give me wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom. In all this magnification, let your wisdom fall. Let your wisdom flow. The Spirit of God and the Spirit of wisdom come upon me and let me begin to manifest in the wisdom of the Almighty. Le Papa Ruku Shetiri Siti Galara. La jolo sikta jolo zia la tani gir gir gira gira La pa kushe chine bra la ta kushe chine bra la ta gir gira 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 Lord I need wisdom Lord I need wisdom to understand what I'm doing Lord I need wisdom for God to position myself for progress Lord I need wisdom for God to be able to move and succeed in life Lord I need wisdom to be able to overcome all my adversaries Lord I need your wisdom now Baba 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 Jesus, take me to the place where you are. Jesus, accept your work in my life. Complete that which you have started. Take me to the place where you are. Let me, oh God, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Lord, I need that wisdom. Oh, to be able to navigate the different corners of this earth. I need that wisdom, oh God, for my life and for my destiny. I need that wisdom. But I love to be wisdom, oh God. Oh, Lord, give me wisdom, oh Lord. Papa, 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 Yes. Go through the same tragedy two times in their lifetime. Only fools, only fools. Go through the same challenge year after year. Only fools have repetitive occurrences of frustration. But Lord, I don't want to be called a fool. From the day to the past, I tell you. Let your glory fall, oh God, Jesus. Let your glory fall, Jesus. Touch me once more time. 
Este partido no fue tan bueno, será. Receive now the spirit of wisdom in the name of Jesus. Receive the spirit of wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray from Luke 21 15. Anything you know in your life, you are going to speak to them now. You have the spirit of wisdom of God. You are going to command. You are going to declare. You are going to announce. You are going to demand. It's a public declaration. Hallelujah. See, the truth is, a white man can only fall once in one matter. He rises, let him fall in one matter. He can never fall in that matter again forever in his life. That's wisdom. If anybody that falls two times in one area of life is a foolish man. Then not to talk of those who are falling every year. December, because people are going to the east. Market don't fall, your business closed down. He did it 2020, 2021, 2022. You are one of the fools in the world that the devil is trying to display. A wise man can only fall once in one matter. All lifetime. That's to say you are taking the learnings from that matter. Somebody say, Father, standing on your word in Luke 21, verse 15, I receive now a mouth and a wisdom that all my adversaries can neither convey do nor resist. You put power, put power into your word. I receive now. A mouth and a wisdom standing on your wall in Luke 21 15 that all my adversaries they can neither convey, they will never say better than I say in any subject matter of life, they can never resist whatever I say. I resist now a mouth and a wisdom. That all my adversaries can neither contain nor resist. Therefore, I declare and declare, I came from above, I am above all. No power can put me down by the knowledge of God and by the wisdom of God. Standing on your wall is just the thing that you want. I came from above. I am a poor sickness. I am a poor disease. I am a poor property. I am a poor shame. I am a poor hopelessness. I am a poor frustration. I am a poor depression. I am a poor weeping. I am a poor crying. I am a poor loss of job. I am a poor property. I am a poor bankruptcy. I am a poor weeping and natural thing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am a poor foolishness of any dimension. In the name of Jesus, I came from above. I came from above. I am above all. Standing on your wall. In Deuteronomy 28, 
and verse 13. I will let that be measure. I am not a borrower. I am a letter to measure. I decree and declare. I proclaim and pronounce. I am a lender to measure of the world. I am not a borrower. I can never be a borrower. I can never be a borrower. My God shall supply all of my needs according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Therefore, standing on your wall, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, I will never pray for prayer. I can never pray for prayer. The wisdom of God will put food on my table. The wisdom of God will make the way for me where there seems to be no way. The wisdom of God who connect me with great men in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible is true. In the book of Proverbs 21, verse 1, that the hands of the king are in the hands of the Lord, and he turns them around at me. Therefore now, every king that is going to be useful to me, God is turning his heart now to pray for me. All the kings of the world, God is turning their heart to pray for me right now. God is turning their heart. God is turning their heart. Kings come to my dining table. Men and women come to serve me. The children of the king, they bring their offerings. My God, blah, 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 blah. my God is working things for me. My God is working things for me. I am a giver. I am a lender. I am not a follower. I give to men. I give to women. I will never borrow. I can never bear. My God shall supply all of my needs according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I am a success. I am not a failure. I am a success. I am not a failure. Total health is my fortune. I can never fall sick. I can never go to hospital. I can never fall sick. I can never fall sick. I can never be a naked. In the name of Jesus. The devil cannot make me sick. I carry the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Jesus didn't go to hospital. I will not go to hospital. Jesus was not hospitalized. I will not be hospitalized. I don't care how my body is me now. I command my body by the wisdom of God. Be strong now. In the name of Jesus. I command my body with this strength now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, just begin to thank God. Use your mouth to begin to make declarations about things, about your life, about your future. I don't know what project you are working on, but God knows. Begin to declare it. Tell God, present your exam before the Lord. Talk to God about the project you are handling. Talk to Him about your life. Talk to Him about your ministry. Talk to Him about your desire, your hopes, your aspirations. Talk to God now. Anything that held you captive must break tonight. Talk to God right now. 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 Malaka kushi tete ne pranika salaba. Razata la pranika kashu to tolozi kedida. Razata talizi kedi kala pranika kashu kedida. Ushia kala la 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 la. Razuto tolozi tete ne 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 ne. Razuto tolozi tete ne 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 ne. Razuto tolozi tete ne 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 ne. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Just lift your two hands. We are going to receive. There are two spirits. They are working together. One is called wisdom. The other one is called discretion. Wisdom is to know the right things to say and to say them right. Discretion is, is to know when to go out and when to come in. When to open your mouth and when not to even answer. Hallelujah. The two of them work together. We the spirit of wisdom now in the name of Jesus Christ. 
From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, you will never be born a Jew anywhere in this world anymore. Receive the spirit of wisdom in the name of Jesus. To know when to let go. I ah, said, if you can make noise too much, make a triumph for ground, make a waka for much. To know when to let go and to know when to hold on. You may not just need to hold on for five minutes. Then some people just throw in the towel and five minutes the patient changes and they're like, ah, if I had known. You are going to say, Lord, give me that spirit of discretion. To know when to let go and to know when to hold on. Father, release now the spirit of discretion upon your people. Now, in the name of Jesus, they will know when to let go. They will not just throw in the tower because the situation has changed. They will know when to let go. They will know when to hold on. The spirit of discretion come upon your people. Now, in the name of Jesus. Something happened many years ago. The economy was bad. Many people started to resign their jobs. But a few months later, salary was multiplied by four. It was like, ah, if I had known, I would not have resigned my job. Father, Lord, grant unto your children 